this video is a continuation of our discussion of factorial analysis of variance and extends to source tables beyond our discussion of just what are interactions and how we interpret them. So in this segment, we'll be talking about a particular study in which um, a researcher was interested in finding out whether there were in fact differences uh, in the persuasiveness of advertisements on TV by their volume. You might have noticed that some uh, commercials tend to be really loud on TV and sometimes that's because um, they make sure that it's broadcast louder so that people pay more attention. Well, we don't even know if that's necessarily really effective. So the researchers decided to ask the groups of men and women to listen to some commercials played at different volumes and then they had them rate how persuasive um, the particular uh, commercial they listened to were. So here are some scores and data from this study and we'll get to them in a minute but first let's talk about um, our particular design. So they had three different um, volume or loudness uh, conditions, a soft, a medium, and a loud. And then they were interested in looking at gender effects. Are women persuaded differently than men when it comes to volume of commercials on TV? So we've already started with our source table. I'm not going to be asking you to compute the sums of squares from raw data. And so I've already filled those in for you. But what we will be talking about is discussing how do you derive the degrees of freedom, the mean square, and the F statistic based on the sums of squares that we have. And again, the particular name of this uh, study would be a two by three analysis of variance or a two by three between subject analysis of variance because we have a, a main effective volume with three levels a main effect of gender with two levels, and then the interaction between volume and gender. So we're starting here with determining the characteristics of the comparison distribution. And this requires us to do some additional computations because as you noticed, we now are splitting our variance into three different between subjects sources. So we'll start with degrees of freedom for the number of rows. And in this case, we had in our design gender as our rows, and so that would be the two number, uh, the two levels, right, of gender, male and female, and then we subtract one and we get our degrees of freedom of one. Next, we do degrees of freedom columns. And if you'll remember, we had three columns of our different volumes. We had soft, we had medium and we had loud. So we have three columns and subtract out one and we get our degrees of freedom of two. Now this next part, we're going to talk about the degrees of freedom for gender. Here we have degrees of freedom interaction, which is the degrees of freedom for the rows times the degrees of freedom for the columns. And here, if you multiply two times one, you get two. So there's degrees of freedom for the interaction of two. And lastly, well, not lastly, because we have one more after that, um, we look at degrees of freedom within. And essentially what we're saying, this is really long, right? It's for each individual cell, each individual group of people, we are going to have a degrees of freedom. And then we add them all together. And so for each cell of our research design, it will be the number of participants in that particular cell and subtract out one. And then we add all of the different cells, degrees of freedom together, and we get degrees of freedom within. So men soft, men medium, men loud, women soft, women medium, women loud. So here's our research design again. And we had three participants in each of our six cells. And so that means we have n equals 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, and since they're all the same, then we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 degrees of freedom within. So we enter this 12 here. 
Now, because we had three in each cell, and we also had six cells, that means there were 18 total participants in our study. So in our last com computation, we have our degrees of freedom total, which means we take the total number of participants and we subtract one. So that gives us 17 because we had 18 minus one. But we can also see, and this is another check for us, to say, okay, degrees of freedom within is 12. We add two, that's 14, 15, 17. Okay, we computed our degrees of freedom total correctly. The next step is to get the mean squared. So for each of these main effects, um, and for the interaction, and then also for the within subject sum of squares, we are going to take the sum of squares in that particular row and divide it by the degrees of freedom for that particular row. So in this case, we'll have the sums of squares for volume divided by the degrees of freedom for volume. If you're following along and computing as we go, then you might want to stop and do your computations now. So pause the video and continue when you're ready. Okay, so here's what we have for each of our different rows. So we're taking the sums of squares for gender divided by degrees of freedom for gender. Same thing for interaction. This 102.77 divided by 2 would go in here. And then the 98.67 for the sums of squares within divided by the 12 degrees of freedom within would go here. And you can check your answer. So for our final calculations, we need to now compute three separate F values because we've now partitioned our variance into three different sources. The source for volume, the source for gender, and the source for the interaction of volume by gender. So we will have three different F tests. And you'll also notice that we have three different, <clears throat> well, they're not entirely different, but each source of variability has its own degrees of freedom. And it's possible that you could have, for each of these between subjects sources of variability, different degrees of freedom depending upon your research design. And then they all use the same degrees of freedom within. So for our F test, we will take, again, the mean square um, for volume and then divide it by the mean squared within. Because remember, what we're looking at is a ratio of estimate of the variability based on between subject sources over within subject sources. And if this variability due to between subject sources is greater, then we'll expect to have a large F value than, say, whatever the variability is due to within subject sources. So if you'd like to take a moment and compute these values, um, you might want to pause your video now. Okay, so if we've substituted in, um, here's how I've computed each of these for our F statistic. We have all of them, you'll notice the denominator is 8.22 because that's our mean squared within. And then we have the mean squared for each of the different between subject sources in the numerators. And here are our values. So now the next thing that we need to do is determine if any of these particular values are statistically significant. Now we always begin with the interaction effect because if you actually have differences depending upon the level of the independent variable um, that a person experiences, then what you're finding is that um, those differences matter, that it's uh, dependent on both levels of the the two different independent variables that the people experience. So really the main effects don't make a lot of sense to examine. So in finding the critical values, in order to figure out which ones of those particular tests are actually significant, um, we start with that interaction of volume and gender. And we use the degrees of freedom within for all of our critical values for the interaction of volume and gender, for the main effect of volume, and for the main effect of gender, because they all have the same degrees of freedom within. But now we have an interaction um, degrees of freedom of two, 
degrees of freedom for volume is also two. And our main effect of gender, its degrees of freedom are different. It's only one. And so we'll have a different critical value. So these two will be the same because their degrees of freedom between is the same. So that brings us to the next step. What are the critical values? Well, if we go to our, our F table, you'll see the degrees of freedom between are in the columns and the degrees of freedom within are down the side. Now this is an excerpt, so we actually have 12 right here to begin with. And we set our P level at alpha equals 0.05. So if we look at two degrees of freedom, which is what we need for both the interaction and the main effect of volume, then we can find the value that um, they converge on and you see that it's 3.88. So we can enter this over here as our F critical. Our critical F value is 3.88, both for the interaction and for the main effect of volume. So now to get at our degrees of freedom for um, our critical value for the main effect of gender, see that we still have the same degrees of freedom within, but now we have the degrees of freedom between of one, which yields a critical value of 4.75. So we'll enter that here. So we have two different critical values. And remember, this is because we actually have a family of F distributions that vary slightly depending upon the number of degrees of freedom, um, the combinations that we see. I put them both on the same uh, diagram here um, to say, okay, we have the same 5% in the tail, just kind of for ease of, of presentation, but they would be slightly different curves in actuality. Okay, so first we start with interpreting that interaction and the F that we calculated is 6.25. So if we come back over here, the 6.25 is going to fall out way out here in the tail compared to that 3.88. So we get to reject the null hypothesis, and we say there's a significant interaction. So it's not really necessary for us to go back and look at those main effects. So you wouldn't even have to look up those critical values in the F table until you failed to reject the interaction um, effect. So essentially, you can just check the interaction, and if it's significant, then you can stop there, which is what we're going to do because we have a significant interaction. Now the question becomes, OK, since we have this significant interaction, where exactly is the difference? Like, you know, we need a post hoc analysis. Now certainly that would be um, beyond the scope of what you would be doing for this course, um, we would do what are called cell means comparisons. So we can say, oh, let's look at the means in each of these six different cells, and we could evaluate where those differences are and actually do tests to see which ones of these cells were responsible for the differences we found. But what we can say and what we can conclude here is that there was a significant interaction of gender and loudness of the commercial such that the differences between men and women depended upon whether the commercial volume was soft, medium, or loud. And you'll see that I've got this in APA-style notation at the bottom, where we have that interaction with two between subjects' degrees of freedom and 12 within subjects' degrees of freedom. And then we have our calculated uh, F statistic, and P is less than 0 0.05 because this is statistically significant. So just to kind of give you a better visual display of these different means that we have here, um, we could take a look at a bar chart that shows us what those means look like. And you can see that the difference between men, which is the darker bar, um, the women or the teal bar, is that they're pretty similar for medium. Um, men are more persuaded by soft, and they're way more persuaded by loud. It may be that this difference is driving the difference. I mean, this difference is clearly different than this one, but I don't know unless I do post hoc analysis. But you can also draw those midpoints and see, yep, clearly there's an interaction because these lines are definitely not parallel. So that's uh, the rest of the, uh, this video on source tables. I hope that it's been helpful.